Hey everybody, it's Chris. Welcome to the next part of my Essentials course series. We're ready to move on in our adventure of this enterprise-like landing zone. I'm just this little independent creator, so if you could drop a like or subscription, I appreciate it. And I hope you will join me on this journey as we keep going down these essential courses. I love making them. In the first course, we went ahead and built out the landing zone, first by using Terraform to bootstrap the landing zone components that it needed, like an S3 bucket, DynamoDB table, and a key. And then we moved that state into the account, into the bucket itself, moved it off of our computer, and validated that now we have what we need to run Terraform using remote state, which is a good first step. In this video, we're going to be covering authentication so that when we ask GitHub to run a workflow or a pipeline, that the runner that it's going to use, the little machine that's going to execute the code, has a way to securely authenticate and authorize itself against our AWS account and perform the actions we needed to perform, such as building buckets or building machines or setting configuration values. We're going to use OIDC or OpenID Connect as the method of doing this because one, it's highly secure. Two, it's the preferred method to authenticate and authorize your CI runners into an AWS environment. It's what they prefer as well. And I think number three, it's simple to do uh, and uses the AWS Security Token Service or STS. So you're not having to handle credential files. You're not passing along secrets for username and credentials in your GitHub repos, and you're not having to build some sort of Rube Goldberg machine to provide short-lived credentials. For every AWS account that we have, we're going to build a OIDC provider and give it a role and a policy. That's kind of a smart thing to do. There are ways where you can centralize this, but then I feel like you're making dependencies that don't need to exist. It is lightweight to set this up. I think it's fine to do it on a per account basis, and that's the default configuration recommended by all of these vendors anyways. And it only requires these three things. First, who are you? That's where we tell AWS IAM that we have an OIDZ provider information on GitHub. And that's how we connect in. We know who we're connecting to. We have their certificate, et cetera. Once that connection is established, we also need to give it a role. And that's the how. How do I get in and start performing some actions? It's using this IAM role. So the second resource we're going to create is an IAM role for the GitHub Actions runner to assume via OIDC. And then the final resource is the policy or the attachment of the policy to our role. And that's the what, what can I do? What can I affect? What changes can I make? What are my permissions? Let's start by taking a look at my platform repository. It's a private repo that I run where all these Terraform projects that we're building are going into it and I'm bootstrapping and building out the environment from platform. In the previous video, we built the landing zone component and this contained everything the landing zone needed like the S3 bucket, the DynamoDB table, et cetera, all the things that Terraform needs to run remote state. That's already been deployed. We don't have to worry about that. We're gonna be moving into this new project called GitHub OIDC. The GitHub OIDC project folder looks identical in its structure to the landing zone folder for a reason. I like all of my projects to be syntactically and systemly identical. The configuration of them, the naming of things, everything is identical so that once you know the command for any one project, you can repeat that same command everywhere. So our files are named the same, our inputs folder is structured the same. Inside the main.tf, we're building just three resources. First, we need to build the OpenID Connect provider. This is going to tell AWS about this URL here for GitHub, what's going on as far as a client perspective. We're using the token system as our client, and then the thumbprint based on the certificate. GitHub Actions also needs a role to assume. So we're going to give it that role, we'll just call it GitHub Actions, and throw that in the account. Note that we have two variables here for the organization and the repo. This is how we limit who can invoke this connection. Only my organization and specifically the repos that I list are able to assume this role, connect via OA OIDC and do their business. And that makes sure that not anybody could request this and potentially get into your environment. I do have a star at the end of that string on line 26 and that's fine. That's just saying any branch within that repo can invoke the OIDC connection. It's pretty typical to see that. If you need to lock it down even further, such as having a special release branch or a production branch or whatever it is that signifies something more security constrained, 
you would add that to the structure of your path in line 26. Last but not least, because this is just a functional test, we're going to attach the admin access. This is a brand new account that we're just making sure that our pipeline is able to connect to OIDC. We don't have any bugs in the system because the moment we prove this out, we're going to delete this and then we'll pick a more applicable and specifically permissive policy versus just giving it administrative access. So here we're in the root of the repo. Let's go on into our Terraform environment and then our GitHub OIDC project. And you can see in purple, it's letting me know that I'm in the GitHub OIDC folder of this project. We're on the main branch. We don't have any changes to commit. So let's just take a look here. We can see all of our Terraform files, et cetera. Let's go ahead and initialize this Terraform uh, project here, this Terraform plan, and get that all squared away. There we go. So we know we're initialized. We have the latest providers downloaded. Everything's ready to rock and roll. Go ahead and clear the screen just to give us some real estate. And then let's apply this change so that we can create those OIDC resources and the role. All right, we're expecting three resources. It's going to make three. We've got here at the top the provider uh, for the connection via OIDC, the GitHub Actions role that we're creating that can be assumed by that particular OIDC connection, and then the policy that's being attached to it, which for just right now we're using administrator. But again, that's not something you want to leave around. We're just using it for this functional test, and we're going to remove it. Let's validate that everything's been created. I've logged in with my Chris Wall, just normal account. I'm on the Sandbox account. And if I refresh here, we should see the new OIDC Connect provider. There it is, going to GitHub. So that's been created. And if we go inside there, we can see we're just going to use the token service uh, so that we can get cr temporary credentials. Then if I go over to roles, I searched for GitHub a little earlier. There's nothing in there. I should be able to repeat that search. And there's our GitHub Actions role. If we click into that, we can see that it's just using the admin access for the moment and that we've got our normal tags that Terraform provides to everything for platform, Terraform as our source, and Sandbox as our environment. With the Terraform complete, we've got the resources built, we've verified them with our eyeballs, we're good with the code. Now we need to test the code by building a pipeline. I've got a really simple one here called Hello World. It's only dispatched manually. That's what that on workflow dispatch means is that the only thing that's going to trigger this pipeline is you pressing a button. <laughs> so it's pretty safe to run this. We've got a few permissions that are set here. You're going to need these for OIDC. So ID token write is just necessary because we're connecting using temporary credentials. And being able to read the contents of the repo is pretty much always required if you're going to work with the repo and we need the code inside of here. At least in the future, we will. Uh, so contents read are required. We're running one job, which is called Hello World. We're using their latest version of the Ubuntu runner. And then we've got three simple steps. One, we do the standard checkout of a repository that's going to grab the code that's in the repo and put it into the runner that GitHub is providing. The second is we're going to configure our credentials. And these are pretty much always going to be your first two steps in a job. But now we want to connect. And for that, we're just providing the role, the AR end of the role that we built and the region that we're connecting into, because that's the account specific information that we need to connect to that OIDC provider. Last, we're just doing a list command against S3, because if we're not connected pr properly, that won't work. So we just know that that will work as a functional test. And that's the whole reason we're building this pipeline, uh, because it's a lot easier to just test it and make sure that everything works solid before we start building on top of it, rather than what I see a lot of people do is they go straight in and start building all the things and don't think about the fundamentals first. And then you're trying to troubleshoot, well, is it a code issue? Is it a permission issue? Is it a bug issue? Like you have no idea. It's much easier to just isolate those failure domains one by one as you build pipelines. We're gonna use the really simple method to test the pipeline by going to the repo in GitHub. So this is my platform private repo. I'm gonna to go to actions, and now, because you've committed that change with the Hello World pipeline to the repo, you'll see a workflow called Hello World OIDC or something very similar to that, whatever you called it. I've already run this a few times because I wanted to make sure I had all the bugs worked out before we went through it together. But I will show you one interesting bug that I ran into. So I'm going to go to the first pipeline that I ever wrote, uh, ran. It looks like everything was great, but if you have a keen eyeball, you'll see it says latest number two because attempt number one failed. Uh, and that's like the world of pipelines, right? It's very, very, very rare 
to get your pipeline to run green the first time, unless it does literally nothing. Uh, so expect to see red before you see green and one failure before one success is pretty good. Like that's not common. It usually takes a lot of tries. With this, we can see there's a failure and the annotation gives it away, but I'm going to go into the job so that we can see what it looks like there. So if I expand both of these spots, you can see, hey, we couldn't assume the role. Hmm. Why not? Right? Like, so what was the issue there? Well, going into the logs within AWS, I saw that it was trying to assume a role for an organization that didn't exist. We were looking for wall network, all lowercase, when it should have been wall network uh, properly, you know, W and N should be capitalized. And so once I fixed that, that actually caused the job, if I go back here to the first attempt, to succeed. So at that point, it was successful. You can see in the job, hey, something failed, what step it failed on, and then you can track down the logs in AWS or in GitHub to see what actually happened. Okay, that aside, I just wanted to be a little nerdy for a moment. What you need to do here, because you're not going to see any pipelines run yet, is go to run workflow. You have one choice, you know, what branch do you want? I only have the main branch, but if you are working on a feature branch, make sure to change it and then click run workflow. And if you get impatient, you can click on the workflow type and automatically refresh it. Otherwise, it takes about five to 10 seconds and we can see our pipeline is queued to run. Now, in a lot of cases, we can't actually get to it before it's already complete because it doesn't do very much. It doesn't taste very long. You can see here in seven seconds, this pipeline is complete, but we're doing all the things. First, we're connecting to OIDC. We're using that configure AWS credentials action from GitHub to assume the role that we want from OIDC. Once that's completed, we can see, hey, we can connect to uh, AWS. We're running that S3 list command. And if we see here, it kind of gives us some obfuscated versions of the environmental variables, what's going on with sh the shell, et cetera. But here's the victory, right? We can see the WN Sandbox Terraform state S3 bucket is there. We know that exists because that's what we're using for Terraform state. So this pipeline running in GitHub, we have now proven that it can connect via OIDC into our sandbox account, run an arbitrary command that we've asked it to do, in this case, list S3 buckets, and everything was successful. That means we know we're good. Functionally, everything is in the right place. We don't need this experiment anymore, uh, so we can go ahead and throw it away. I'm just going to run a terraform destroy command, same inputs as usual. And this is a lot like the apply command, except it's at the end, instead of saying, do you want to make things, it's going to say, you know, do you want to destroy those things? And here we go. We planned on three things. If we scroll up, we can see the provider, the action role, and the action policy, or the attachment of that policy, rather, are all being destroyed. That's fine. We want that. Go ahead and nuke it. There's also a moment where I'll point out, this is why it's nice to have your Terraform in a modular format. I'm not having to worry about the landing zone or you know any kind of arbitrary code while working on this GitHub OIDC section of my Terraform because that's completely bounded away from the landing zone code. I always think it's a good idea to just make sure things are failing the way you expect them to fail. So now that we've removed the OIDC connection, I just want to see the pipeline fail. I want to see that, no, I couldn't get in. I no longer have access just to make sure I've got that record, you know, kind of in my in my history here saying, ah, this this is working as I expected it to. Well, it took about a minute and a half, but it finally failed. And now, you know, you know exactly what it's going to look like when things fail and what the error looks like here. We're saying we couldn't assume the role. There was no provider found. Oh, I need a provider, right? So sometimes I like to let things fail or produce a failure just to make sure what I think is going to happen is what actually happens. One last thing I wanted to cover is that because this repo contains workflows, I like to use a pre-commit hook for linting the GitHub workflows. It's called Action Lint. I've got it here on the screen. And let's invoke something that pisses off Action Lint. So I've told the AWS actions for configure AWS credentials to use version three of the uh, action instead of version four, which is the most current. So with that, as long as you're running uh, the pre-commit hooks that are included in this repo, uh, as well as the repo that you're checked out, uh, downloading your source code from, we can run a pre-commit run dash dash all dash files. And that's going to very quickly invoke action lint, which then looks through our pipeline and says, whoa, buddy, version three is way too old. Like this is going to fail. And that will prevent you from committing the change because the pre-commit hooks, like it says, run pre-commit and validate like, hey, this is not going to work. This action is old or you have a syntax problem, something like that. So we can catch issues with the workflow via GitHub commits with pre-commit hooks so that you're not 
inadvertently sending code that won't run into the repo. If we change this back to v4, save it, rerun their workflow, we can see everything passes. So there you have it. We've set up the OIDC connection in AWS to GitHub using Terraform. We deployed that Terraform code and validated that the AWS account looked good. It was configured properly. Then we built a Hello World pipeline so that we could functionally test that our configuration was good. We ran that pipeline and did the validation and saw the S3 bucket for our Terraform re return, meaning we have a connection into AWS. And then finally, we destroyed what we built, so we don't have a role that's just assuming the administrative access policy kind of dangling around. As this series of courses continues, we're going to move into more complex pipelines. We're gonna set up more specific permissions that are least permissive following really good security guidelines. And we're gonna start building some workloads that our sandbox application is going to run upon. As always, I'm curious, how did you do? How did you enjoy the course? What did you get out of it? I love comments, put anything below. I will do my best to respond. Back at the end of 2024, I left my job and my career because I'd like making this content. I like being educational in my focus and intent. And I like just building this stuff for free on the internet. So if you could leave a subscription or a like, or just help the algorithm find this a little bit, that's all I ask for my time. I appreciate you very much. Take care, peace and love.